Hello everybody and welcome to this first episode of Cooking with Colin. I'm Colin. I'm not a chef, but I do love to cook. I'm hoping that uh, you can learn something with me as I go through this journey. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, today we're going to be doing spaghetti bolognese. Um, it's a recipe that's been handed down to me from my mum, uh, to her from her dad. It's been adapted a little bit as the years have gone on. Uh, this is my own particular flair on it. Um, so yes, uh, one of the first things you want to do is have the mint browning. So let's get the stove on. Today I'm using Troilite, which is a low calorie cooking spray. You can use any low calorie cooking spray that you like. Uh, this just happens to be the ones we prefer the flavour of. I say prefer the flavour of, some of them have a few different sweets and tastes to them. Uh, I'm using uh, 500 grams of 5% uh, fat lean beef mint. Um, it is what's recommended as a free food if you're doing a plan such as Slimming World and uh, the like. Um, I'm not endorsed by Slimming World or anyone like that, but it's one of the plans I follow, so this is what we use. You want that to brown on a fairly low heat because you'll be adding the first veg to it while it's still browning. So you don't want it to cook too quickly and you'll be doing some of the veg prep as this is uh, getting there basically. Okay, one of the first things you want to do is the carrots. When you are doing any uh, food prep you always want to make sure that you're using a sharp knife. I've uh, sharpened my knife uh, before uh, we started today. If it's something that you need instructions on how to do, I will do an instruction on that at a later date. But uh, typically you can cause yourself more harm with a blunt knife than you can with a sharp. Uh, I'm just ending the carrots there and we'll also be grating those. But first, just going to peel the skin off them. I use a uh, ceramic um, horizontal um, peeler and I like to peel going straight down. I find it's a little bit quicker that way. For this I'm using two large carrots. If you've got smaller carrots just add a couple to bulk it out. The carrots themselves they just add a little bit of sweetness to the um, bolognese that helps bulk it out as well. I'm just going to get rid of some of the food waste here. And then we can get to grating them. Personally I prefer using uh, one of these graters which catches it as you grate it. This will make a little bit of mess, but you know, don't worry. It's how cooking goes, you're not making a bit of mess and you're not doing it right. I to get shards of carrots in the uh, air vents in my laptop. And <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable grating all the way to the end, don't. Your fingers are important, but. I've been doing this for a while, so I'm not bad at it. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I've heard of some uh, dreadful stories of grating. Fortunately, I've never been party to these dreadful stories. Laura has come on. She said she's got one of those graters as well. Aha, excellent. Hello, Laura. I don't know if you noticed, Laura, by that peeling technique that I was doing, you taught me a couple of years back when we were in Dorset. I've been doing it ever since. Okay, that's about good. Now, you're going to want to be adding that to the meat as soon as possible. Oops. Don't mind me as I just wreck my kitchen. But the carrots do flavour the meat, and you want it to flavour as it's cooking. Just give that a good stir in. There we go. 
Okay. He's happy that she's contributed. <laughs> Again, let's uh, clear off a bit of this food waste. Now onto the courgette. Again, we end it each side. Now, it's not entirely important how you cut up the courgette, but this is just the way I prefer it. I half it first. Um, check in OBS. Um, if you continue to not be able to hear us very well, I'll come and check the mic gain in a moment, um, just after I've done this stage. But I half it and then I half it down again lengthways. Now, you can, if you feel confident enough, you can do both at the same time, or you can do one half at a time, it's up to yourself. But one of the things you want to do is you want to guide with your knuckles and you want to tuck your fingers in because you, you don't want to uh, basically chop your fingers off. You can also use a mandolin for this, I have done in the past. If you do be careful, mandolins are very sharp and it is very easy to uh, cut yourself on them. Again, accident awareness. <laughs> yes. And, and you want to pop that straight in as well. A very good angle for seeing cut meat there as well. Fantastic. Okay. That is all the veg prep done. Get this sticking together a little bit so we can break that up into pots. Now we're just going to let the veg and the meat there cook a little bit. Am I still hard to hear? Okay, while that's browning, I'm just going to come around. I do currently have, uh, I forgot to mention, I do currently have my water boiling. Uh, so if you want to get your pasta on fairly soon or early, getting the pasta on and getting it uh, heated is fairly essential because it takes longer to cook than anything else and you want it to be sort of ready at the same time as you sauce. I'm going to uh, just pop round to the back end of the camera just to check the mic settings. Okay, I've done some adjusting there. Just make sure that this isn't in the wrong setting. No, that's good. Okay, I've increased the mic gain by uh, 50, so uh, <laughs> fingers crossed that'll go well. Okay, while this is browning. Oh, we're getting a thumbs up. Fantastic. Okay, while this is browning, we'll get our spices measured. Because you want to spice the meat as it's cooking, you don't want to spice the sauce. This is a very important tip I was handed down. There's something that will go in after you've added the passata, but this is the essential spicing state. So we'll get our meshes out. And we'll start with the half tablespoon measures. First thing we want is half a ta uh, tablespoon of mixed herbs. And it's absolutely fine to mix everything into the bowl together. They will go into the batch all at once. Okay, so that's half a tablespoon of that. Oh, no, I'm using the wrong measure. Silly me. Mistakes happen to the best of us. Let's try that again. 
half tablespoon of that, that's a much better measure. Fantastic. We're going to put in half a tablespoon of oregano. We've just got about enough there. A little drill, but that won't make much of a difference. Then we want the coriander leaf. If all you have is coriander powder, that will uh, work, but it's just uh, the flavour will be a bit different. Oops, bit of spillage there, there we go. Apologies to viewers, I'm just going to angle this up slightly. Cool. One of the most important ones is the basil. Again, this one adds a bit of the sweetness to it. And again, we're at the half tablespoon measure there. And cumin, which is also half a tablespoon. This is a very, very fragrant spice. I do like cumin. Okay, I'm going to do that's all the ta half tablespoon measures. So now we're moving on to the half teaspoon. And we'll do four teaspoons because we've got some curry powder that needs to go in as well. And that's two teaspoons. I use mild curry powder. One. Two. Just going to quickly check the meat. Give it a nice stir. So again, you don't want to burn it. We're going to brown nicely. Okay, then we want half a teaspoon of chili powder. I use mild chili powder. If you want a bit more kick to it, uh, feel free to use hot. But we're not making a chili. There's just a bit of flavour. And then the most important of all is the garlic. And we put in full, three full tablespoons of garlic. Lovely jubbly. A bit of cinnamon I missed on the half tablespoon, uh, sorry, the half teaspoon. Oh no, I, I am wrong. My bad. <laughs> Telling you what wrong, I think it's half a tablespoon of cinnamon. Try and get as level as you can. It's not always that possible when you take them out of a jar. Okay. So we've got the spices measured. I'm now going to add the stock cube as your meat should be getting quite <laughs> nicely there. It's fine. It's fine, just fine. It's fine. It's, it's, it's following, it's all looking. Uh, see everything in action. Ah. It's jumping back and forth. Phil is uh, doing best as my cameraman. I'm not doing best as director giving him the. I'm, try, I'm trying <laughs> my best. He, he's doing well, I'm sure. But it's knowing the best moment. Obviously, this is the first time. So we will approve. Indeed we will. So I am using a uh, beef stock cube. This is the Callow Organic brand. It's um, just a bit low on salt. So if you're cooking for babies or toddlers, it's ideal. I just crumble it up straight in there. Uh, you can use two if you want. I'm just using one. Um, Nor is fine as well. I've used OXO. And this is also where you want to add a bit of salt and pepper. This is just free hand to taste. Give that a stir. Before I add the spices, I will be adding the pasta into their respective pots. <laughs> Apologies, I missed out on the message. John asked if it was samples with spaghetti. Well, if John wants to come round, then yes, but I. Uh, Thank you for watching, John, as I'm pretty sure that you're at the party this evening. <laughs> I 
Happy birthday to your friend. So once the water is boiling, it's a good time to put the pasta in. So you don't want too much to boil off. We've got John in now, Alex is watching. Hello, Rose, Rose. Rose is here. Hello, Rose. So you just pop that in there and you span it around. A tip I found online was if you use tongs, once the spaghetti starts softening, you can twist it down into the pot and it just turns around. So we'll be giving that a try shortly. So you don't break the spaghetti, you use it for? No, I use it for. And I'm going to be doing some penne because there are some among us that are less keen on the spaghetti side of things. As as I just open the bag. Fresh penne. Say fresh, fresh penne, which is a new bag. Okay, rough guide. Typically, about a bowl will do two people. I'm going to do two because uh, throwing pass around. I'm going to pop two in there because spares is always good. This for the purpose. I wait till the climbing stops. <laughs> this uh, recipe should serve about four, depending on appetites. That just goes in there, and now with the oh, with the meat nicely browned, we will add our spices. It's an interesting way to do it. It's all mixed up in a bowl. What people do it so. makes it a little bit easier. You're not going back and forth too much. And they all sort of mix in a bit evenly. Mm. Yeah, it just uh, I find it uh, just makes it a bit a bit better. If you want to just throw it straight in as you're measuring it, by all means go for it. I bet you're going to make a lot of people feel hungry. <laughs> well, if they picked up the ingredients list early in the week and they're cooking along with me, <laughs> then they will get to uh, experience this as well. Okay. Just going to use this opportunity while that's Cook some spices just to clear up my workspace a little bit. I've got Mags Long to join as well. Hello, that's my sister. Thank you for joining the stream. Nice to get some family support in. Having a clear workspace is typically important when you're dealing with um, hot goods. You don't want to be getting cluttered because that can end up with getting flustered and that can lead to accidents. And we don't want accidents. Very much against accidents. Very, Very much against accidents. I take no responsibility for you cutting, burning, or maiming yourself in any way during this stream. Yeah. We assume all, all participants are full grown adults and fully competent with the kitchen environment. Yes. Do try this at home, but if you're under age, seek the guidance of a reliable adult. Okay. So let's see if we can twist this spaghetti now because it's starting to look soft down there. Oh, that's working quite nicely. So how long do you think from start to finish this would be? Um, half an hour. We'll see the proof in the pudding for how long the stream takes. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to add a bit more water to my spaghetti because the spaghetti's taken up quite a lot of the pot and we don't want Undercooked spaghetti. I'm just going to pop a lid on that just so that the newer water gets the temperature a bit quicker. It recirculates the steam, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. I'm just going to stir the penne because we don't want the penne sticking or burning on the bottom. Okay, now it's time to add the passata. For this, I always find this funny. Passata in general, or adding it? <laughs> when you're adding it, yeah. I don't know why. Uh, I do have scissors. Okay, it's the scissors. Actually, I'm skipping ahead slightly because the tomato puree should go first, and you want to have, I believe, roughly half a tube. This is a new tube, so I need to open it. 
If you've ever opened a tube of tomato puree, you get a little spike on the top, and that spike there pierces the foil just there. This gives the sauce a bit of thickness, a bit of body, a bit of flavour. You've got a lot of spices working in combination there, and uh, remembering it's a bolognese, you don't want to entirely lose that tomato flavour. And this helps keep that. So if you just mix in the tomato puree a little bit there. Uh, for dinner at the moment, John, it's uh, spaghetti bolognese. Uh, doing both with spaghetti and with penne. If you haven't guessed by the, you know, the title of the show. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. I forgive you for not being here at the beginning. But now we're just going to add the passata. That is an entire 500 gram carton. You can get this from pretty much anywhere. If you're not sure what passata is, it's pretty much just strained tomatoes. Essentially, you're doubling the tomato goodness of the sauce. Oh, yes. You stir that in. At this point, you want to increase the heat because your meat's cooked, your sauce is in. And that sauce you want to bring the temperature. Oh Phil, could I trouble you to get, there should be some frozen peas in one of the uh, freezers. I think the white one is probably the most likely location for them. Uh, this one here? Yes. Try to be as prepared as I can, but you know, it doesn't always go to plan. Why I'm here? That's why Phil's here. Okay, we're letting that bring up the temperature. There's a couple of things to add to the sauce. One of them is balsamic vinegar, and you want half a cup of balsamic vinegar. If you do not have a cup, you can measure that to 50 grams. Or, I can't remember what the other measurement was, but it is on the uh, site. Because you can use uh, measuring spoons as well to do it. Yeah, special delivery to the cooking show. Fantastic. Using the head of R2D2 as my half cup measurement. I do find that very amusing. <laughs> I have quite enough balsamic vinegar there, but luckily my wife went out and got me another bottle. Just in case anybody's wondering, the head of R2D2 is in fact a kitchen utensil. Yes, I didn't just. just shaped like R2D2. I, I didn't decapitate an R2D2 to use for measuring cups. This was a uh, gift last Christmas. It's an entire set of cups and spoons. Yes, the balsamic vinegar gives it a nice tang. Um, my mum used to use uh, wine, red or white, whichever she uh, was uh, awarded at the time for her amazing service where she used to work. Um, and uh, balsamic vinegar has that similar sort of um, flavour to it. It gives it the same sort of kick and punch without adding the uh, calories of uh, you know wine. Give that a good mix in. That will um, loosen the sauce up a little bit so you can let that simmer for as long as you want to uh, get the thickness that you like. We also want to add some sweetener. If anybody does actually have any questions, feel free to put them through. Absolutely. We're adding three tablespoons of um, sweetener. Uh, we've got Brian Page to join. Hello, Brian. Welcome. Brian, I actually know from uh, my swimming world group. So this recipe may be of uh, particular interest. The actual recipe itself is available on, web on your... Uh the page. ingredients list is currently on the webpage. The mm. recipe I didn't put up ahead of time because I wanted people to watch the video. <laughs> but I will make it available at a later date. After I stir this in, I'm going to check the pasta. I'm a bit free hand with how I cook my pasta, but feel free to follow the pasta cooking guidelines on the packets that you buy. I cook till I feel they're done. 
to actually feel soft and Yes, and if you like it better al dente. Yeah, if you like it that way, make it better al dente. If you like it softer, make it softer. Everyone likes their stuff differently, so put your pasta how you like it. I had a friend that ate it while it was still crispy. You know, I do sometimes quite like um, instant noodles. Mm. Raw. I actually save a little bit of instant noodles to top my noodles when I cook them. Mm. Pasta looks like it's coming on quite nicely. We'll test that shortly. Peas. Now I have frozen peas, and I've never had an issue adding them frozen at this stage. So don't worry if that is all you have. Just going to cut open the bag over here, so that if there's any horrendousness, it's a uh, only two on camera. Okay, and now I'm going to move back to. We do not want peas frozen. What you want is roughly 250 grams of peas. One of the reasons why we love this recipe is a really good way to sneak veg into a meal. So I just want to zero out that scale. I will show you the scale bit itself, but it's uh, not 100% working, so it doesn't really matter. But trust me, I'm going to measure it to about 250 grams. Goodbye, P. It's nice knowing you. That's roughly 250 grams. And that, let's go straight in. Now we'll also add a little bit of water. Just take that a little bit. Pat Bro says she has those scales. Haha, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren is put a lo uh, putting a little heart face. <laughs> Just going to reduce the heat a little bit now. So I don't want it to reduce too quickly. Yes, Laura, Lauren says a sneaky veg, her favourite kind. <laughs> it also has the added benefit of bulking out the mills, so uh, mm. when you're feeding a few more people, the more veg you add, the bigger your mill is. Mm. I imagine you could probably make it entirely vegetarian if you wanted to use something like uh, the vegan or vegetarian mints. Mm. I have made it with turkey mints before for a uh, vegetarian that was coming out of being a vegetarian and was just easing themselves back into meats. And it didn't turn out badly. Um, I prefer beef mints personally. The turkey just didn't quite have the same taste to it, but it was still good. Okay, we're going to let that simmer now. I'm going to test the pasta. So firstly, I'm going to test my spaghetti. Another good thing about tongs is it makes it easy to pick up some spaghetti. You can do the age tested uh, method of throwing it against the wall, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just rinse it bit under some water and try it. Because why not? Mm. Yes, that is cooked well. Delving into my cupboard of things. Shards carrots as well. So uh, you actually missed it at the beginning. We, he did actually put in sliced carrots. Uh, shredded carrots. Sorry, shredded carrots. Yes, sorry, shredded carrots. Sorry, I apologise. Carrots go well. So, uh, as you may see behind me, I do have a, a range of colanders. I quite like this one because it lets me hold the colander while holding this. And I can just strain away. Now, I know a lot of people will rinse their spaghetti after they've strained it, but I 100% do not advise you do that, so I'm just going to turn that heat off. I would always think that if you rinse the spaghetti, it would remove some of the flavour. It actually removes the starch, which helps the uh, sauce itself stick to the pasta. Mm -hmm. And when you're eating spaghetti, you want your sauce sticking to the pasta. Otherwise, you're just picking it up and it's sliding off. But you don't want that. Yeah. So, you want to be uh, not rinsing it. If you like your pasta that way though, carry on. Just gonna test the penne. AA. Feel free to give comments and wells for what you think of the stream, how we're actually doing it at the moment. Penne still needs a little bit of time. Spaghetti does tend to cook a bit quicker though. 
Okay, I'm going to let those cook there. So this probably brings us to the part of the stream where those watching, if you like, you can ask questions, have a chat. It's going to reduce the uh, source a bit there as well. So, anybody got any questions so far? Any uh, any advice you'd like to give me, or any tips that you would like yourself, if I can give them? I love cooking. If I did not enjoy cooking, I would not attempt to make a cooking jam. It's, um, I enjoy cooking for friends, I enjoy cooking for my family, and I take great pleasure when I do something that they enjoy. So I'm hoping that everything I cook on this channel, people will enjoy. And uh, if there's something about it that you don't like the taste, or there's a bit too much spice, or there's um, just something that's not quite right for you and your own taste buds, adjust it. I'm not going to mind. Yeah. It's open, it's open to interpretation, isn't it? Yeah, as I said, I took this recipe from my mum's recipe, that was from my gr granddad's recipe, and it's been adapted all the way down the line. So, that's what cooking is all about. It evolves. Um, yeah, we're getting close to done. Uh, shredded carrot, is this different from grated? Essentially, that's the same. Grated, I, I, I grated it. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can probably use different instruments or tools to shred it in different manners, but I used a grater. Yeah, so essentially, Lauren, it's the same thing. Yep. It yeah. adds a great deal of, uh, it adds additional bulk and flavour to the actual sauce, doesn't it? Yes, and it helps the, uh, by grating it, it um, the carrot sort of dissolves into the sauce mm -hmm. per se. Um, in fact, um, my housemate Jay, uh, who's been eating this since the first day I met him, he didn't, know um, he didn't know there was carrots into it until I had him help me make it. <laughs> He's like, why are you doing carrots? What do you need the great carrots for? I'm like, because it's the main ingredient. Well, one of them. So yes. And yeah, just uh, switching this up a little bit. I mean, if you're not careful with tomato-based sauces, you can get them to be a bit too bitter. Mm. Um, it's why we add the carrots, it's why we add the sweetener, it's why we add the basil. Uh, the balsamic vinegar to some extent helps with that, the cinnamon. Mm. Um, it all helps balance the flavours out, so. Uh, Lauren says thanks, and uh, Vasco uh, Regula. Hello Vasco, I used to work with Vasco. He's uh, from America, how are you doing? Mm. Uh, oh, we don't know which one. And Sean's here as well. <laughs> Which Sean? I know a few Sean's. Sean Hello Sean. Sean used to live with me as well. Yeah. well people talk uh, I'm pretty sure I've made this for Sean before. Just going to test that penny again because it wasn't too far off though. Mm. And you can overcook pasta. And you might like it overcooked. Yeah, Sean says, uh, oh, oh sorry, Vasco says hi. Sean said it's a good recipe. He said it many times. Thanks Sean. Uh, Vasco says he's doing well. Excellent. Good to hear Vasco. We did not speak enough, and we need to get a game of civilization going soon. <laughs> That's done. Let's get that string. Are we going to require a tester for the sauce, or are you going to do it based on your own personal experience? Um, I'll get someone to test it. It's sort of my tradition to let somebody else test it for me. Uh, Rose is currently asking what next week's recipe will be, or next the next recipe that you choose to do. I believe it is going to be the barbecue, I say the, um, <laughs> a barbecue chicken pasta bake of my own invention. Mm. Uh, uses broccoli and uh, barbecue mix all together quite nicely. Um, which uh, we, I invented one time when we actually just had a bit less food in the house than normal. And I was just like, right, I'm just going to scrap together a meal. And it turned out gorgeous. And I've been adapting it since because I've been adding stuff to it since then to change flavours and figure out what it's like and how, uh, how to make it as best as it can be. And um, my, uh, again, have my Jay, uh, probably gives the best praise. He, uh, every time I make it, he goes, it's always good, don't worry about it. <laughs> and it's his favourite meal. So uh, that will be next week. Another pasta-based meal, or like fairly heavy pasta-based, but a lot of mine will be. I'm half Mediterranean. <laughs> I love my pasta. Uh, uh, so your yes. sister says that she actually slices them in the oven used to hide them by shredding them. Unless <laughs> uh, uh, you're referring to carrots, to anyone who's just turned up. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, grating I actually got from my mum. I'm not sure if Nanny did it, but so uh, it was definitely something that mum showed me. So, Phil, would you like to do the honors? I can give it a taste. Absolutely. You know, I have a similar flavour preference to yourself. Indeed. Oh. Don't want to get on camera. Don't mind. You, you, you don't want to. Are you eager to test this, though? 
True, you probably could share a spoon. You're married. <laughs> I think it might be too sweet, actually. It might really? be my personal preference, yeah. Okay, well, give it a quick. Actually, to be fair. A little extra sweetness, but otherwise, that's spot on. Yes, this. For, for those that don't know, um, typically I freehand uh, my spices. But for the sake of making this channel and for the sake of my uh, wife being able to cook this when I'm not around, uh, I have been. Trying to get down the exact measurements. Uh, uh, Sean is saying that speaking of pasta bake, Maz's pasta bake was great. Maz's pasta bake was great. And uh, Basco is saying that he wants to try some too, so he'll have to be getting that over here. Yes. Uh, if he wants to actually try some. Where did I put a tablespoon measure? It has run out of the limit. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I think just maybe another tablespoon of sweetener. Just a little bit. That's all. And then it's spot on. But like, we, like you said, it is open to interpretation. Some people might make it more sour. Some might make it more sweet. Um, some people might want to put in a lot of curry powder. Or ruin it with some extra sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I have never done that to this. That, that I consider blasphemy. I love sriracha sauce and I will add it to a lot of my recipes after they've been cooked. Um, but I will not... Besmirch this with sriracha. But of the meals that I do show you how to cook, I will tell you which one I think it goes well with. Mm. Okay. Well, that's food cooked. Um, did people want to hang around to see some people trying it? So, like, you could try some on camera? I'll try some on camera. Okay. Would um, you like to come and dish up? We may just have to wait a moment to actually get some responses to that. Yep. We're being joined by Demon Jellybean. Feed me! <laughs> who, uh, if you're not familiar with, does her own um, food channel. Well, she does her own tasting Do channel. Do you throw a bowl of plates? So. I'd put it in my face. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta okay. I'll turn Very that exciting. off. Tongs there for serving. I'll get you oh. a bigger spoon for the... Oh, what? What am I having? Penne or I have spaghetti? Uh, oh, yeah, you're going to have penne, sorry. Oh, well, well, I could so still carry some penne with this. You can give it a try. It'll be Why not? Experience. As you can see, Demon Jelly Bean arrives and all, well, everything Shush. goes wrong. <laughs> everything will be if fine. If you're someone who follows me fairly regularly, you'll see Demon Jelly Bean's uh, videos pop up on my news feed weekly. Oh, so, so check those out. Did I not share last week? No, because I forgot. Oh, I didn't well. do one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my fault then. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> When it happens, I forget my gaming videos yeah, I'll be soon. all the I'll time. Be sensible. Cool. Cut. Cut the Ta -da. Ta -da. Am I leaving? Am I staying here? You're staying. Think, We're trying to camera. You volunteered. Yeah, I think this council start to finish. Yes. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Essentially. It's us. Be careful. <laughs> Blow on it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining me, guys. Uh, does anyone have any last questions before we wrap up? We may just have to wait a moment. It's literally just Sean. Uh, yeah, no worries. We're about 40 seconds uh, ahead of you guys, so uh, we've got to wait for your questions or responses to come in. <laughs> <laughs> got to pass the time somehow. <laughs> By the time their questions come in, they got to wait 40 seconds for my response. Uh, it, oh, Sorry? It disappeared on me. Did I you? Was it and it I was going to say, did you end me, Phil? No, I haven't ended it. I, ended it. I think everybody's given the typical classroom response. Uh, uh, Rosie's asking where your chef's hat is at. Well, I don't have one yet, but if you'd like to volunteer to buy me one, uh, you know where I live. <laughs> Uh, aside from that, we're not getting any actual questions. No worries at all then. Um, next week, I'm going to try and be on YouTube, unless there is a strong preference for me to keep it here. Please add uh, to the comment sections and let me know. Um, and otherwise, thank you for joining me tonight. I uh, personally felt tonight's actually gone quite well. There have been very few things that <laughs> have gone outside of my plans. Um, and yes, we'll see you next week for the barbecue pasta bake. 
William, had you just joined, I'm afraid we are going to have to end the video. Ah, sorry, now. William, thank you for joining, but we are just going. Uh, but feel free to watch the video back as soon as it finishes processing. It will be available on the Facebook page. Yep, time to go. Well done.